In this short video, I'm going to explain how to write procedures and use a procedure to compute various quantities. And eventually, we want to use and write out a procedure to employ Euler's method. So first, I want to look at the overall structure for a procedure. All right, if you type it into Maple, you're going to see this is the basic setup. You're going to do write in proc for procedure and then type in your parameter list. Then if you need to, use some local variables and list what those are going to be. Then you do the action of the procedure. You write the body out, what's going to happen in there, and then you got to specify when you want the procedure to end. Again, the local, local variables are optional. You don't need them necessarily in a given procedure. So for instance, let's write a procedure to solve the easy linear equation ax plus b equals c for x. By only inputting the, the coefficients, we only want to input the numbers a, b, and c. We know what the solution is. You subtract b over, divide by a, so our solution x is going to be c minus b divided by a. But just to get some practice writing on a procedure, let's just write this simple one out. So we're going to call it s for solution, this will be colon equal to be defined to be this procedure where we're going to input the numbers a, b, and c and then we don't need any local variables here but we're just gonna do this operation maple is going to compute this number right here which is the solution and then it's gonna end the procedure and then it's gonna output whatever we computed whatever the last um, thing computed was in the body and there's only one thing computed in the body the procedure for this example so now let's test it out okay let's see what happens does that make sense alright so first we gotta execute that all right, notice if you have the colon at the end, you'll see the output. If you put a semicolon, you won't see the output. But now if we click on these, we get a 2, 4, 8 triangle. That is uh, area, or sorry, the, the solution to that equation is going to be 2. Put 4, 5, 18 in for A, B, and C. The solution is 13 over 4. Put some decimal numbers in. You'll get your solution. Okay, there you go. All right, now let's do a little bit more complicated one. This one will involve computing or defining and computing a certain local variable. It's the area of a triangle using Heron's formula. And that states that the area of a triangle is the square root of the semi-perimeter, which is this perimeter divided by 2, okay, times the difference between the semi-perimeter and uh, the length of the first side, times the difference between that and the length of the other two sides also. You do that product and take the square root, and it turns out that gives you the area of the triangle. Notice this will not come out negative on the inside because this is the not quite the average of these numbers, but the perimeter is it's this half the perimeter, and that's going to be greater than one of the any one of the individual side lengths of your triangle. All right, so let's see what the procedure is going to look like for that. So I'm going to call it A, all right, and then it's going to be only need to input in this case again a b and c for the three lengths of the three sides of the triangle for this one though we're going to define a local variable call it s okay so we type in local then hit a space put s maple will recognize that as a special um, character and it'll bold it out and then we're going to define our local variable first we're going to say s is colon is defined b and then type in what we want it to be equal to semi-perimeter take the perimeter and divide it by two you gotta put a colon at the end of each one of these lines this is a little bit different for us than normal 2d math mode the colon has to be there inside a procedure and then afterwards that we want to use her own formula to compute the area so type it in and then again semicolon and then we're gonna type in and proc semicolon and then press enter on that if you want to see the output, use semicolon. If you don't want to see the output, you can just put a colon at the end and press enter. It will still define the procedure, execute it, but it won't show you um, that blue output there. Now, let's put this in for a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We should get what is an area. That's a right triangle. The area is going to be 6. Likewise, for one of the well-known right triangles, 5, 12, 13 triangle, the area is 30, which you can check. Okay. All right. Now, the last one I want to do is going to help to lead up to get to Euler's method. That procedure is going to be slightly more complex. 
and it's going to involve some local variables and a loop inside of it. Okay, because if you remember from the last video on Euler's method, you have to repeatedly apply it and repeatedly compute a, the same a similar calculation, but it's based on the previous information you've calculated, the previous y values, the previous t values. All right, and this will be similar. So we're gonna add up the first and the integers. Okay, we know a formula we can check it with, but we're not gonna use that formula. We want to just add up the first n integers. All right, now I'm gonna do a little bit of work here to kind of get you used to where this formula is going to come from in the body. All right. So if the first integer is positive integer is 1. Then we got to add on the first two positive integers, 1 plus 2. So n, which is going to be the sum, I'm going to define in the procedure is 3. Then to get to the next one, you take 3 where you're previously at and you add on the next integer in the list, which is 3. Okay, 3 plus 3 is 6. To get the next one, we have to add on 4 to the sum of the first 3, which was 6. So it's going to be 6 plus 4 which tells us that n is 10. And then you do it again. You're going to take your some of your first four integers, which is 10, and you're going to add on the next integer in the list, which was 5. And that gives you that n is equal to 15. And you do it again. So you some of the first five integers, we knew what that was already because we already did that. And then we add on the next integer in the list, which is 6. So the next the sum is 21. All right, and you notice what's happening here in this kind of right column. We're taking the previously computed value and we're adding on the next integer in the list. Two, three, four, five, or six. All right, so that's why the formula comes out like it does below here. All right, so we're going to define and give it the name sum to be this procedure where you're just going to input the integer you want to add up to. So we're going to assume that's a positive integer. We're going to define two local variables, one capital N, one I. N, we're going to just define it, capital N, we're going to first define it to be one. Right? That's our starting point for that local variable. Now, this is more a little bit more confusing than the previous other couple because we have to write this these clauses out. So if n is equal to 1, we want the procedure to stop. Well, then we're going to output or eject the number 1. We're just going to stop it. If n is bigger than 1, we want to do something else. All right, what we want to do is add up the first n integers, much like we did up here. Okay, Much like we've done up here. So the way to type that in is else, what you're going to do is, is for i running from 2 to n, you're going to do the following. All right, now this looks a little bit strange because the n shows up on both sides, but you're going to define n to be to be equal to the previous value that n was defined to be equal to plus the next integer in line. So let's run through this and make sure this um, lines up with what we said above. n capital n is starting at one, and we're going to do this from two to n. So starting at i equal two, it's going to be one plus 2. Okay? And that's going to be defining n to then be 3. And then for i equals 3, it's going to be 3 plus 3, which is 6. So then n is going to be redefined to be 6. And then when i is equal 4, it's going to be 4 plus 6, which is going to be 10. And it's going to keep doing that until it gets to the value that we input it. Okay? And again, that's matching up with our little scratch work above here. Okay, so let's double check this. All right, and then to finish this off, we're just going to hit n do, type in n, and then put a space and then do, and the if clause, and the procedure. And if you press enter to execute it, you see the output. Let's test it with a couple. Some of the first four integers is 10. That's correct. Some of the first 10 integers is 55. You can check that with the formula 10 times 11 divided by 2. That's 5 times 11, which is 55. Okay. Now, a quick comment here is that by default, the procedure is going to ex is going to eject the uh, last copy thing computed in the body of the procedure. If you want to, you can use the return command and return a specific value at the end of it. So, for instance, the same procedure, the same result will um, happen if we define a different procedure. And I shouldn't call this S. I should call this S1 because I called something S before in this sheet. And then everything else is the same except 
you're going to say return n, and that's going to return the last value. Okay, now that's not going to matter for this procedure, but it might matter for other ones that we're going to look at. Oops, I'm going to put in S1 here, and then we get the value 55.